Hi. In, in here we have Ian Wright. He has the best title here that I read so far. So he's a senior scientific software engineer, and he comes from the University of Oxford. So let's give him a warm welcome. So just a, a quick introduction. Um, so senior software engineer with Malaria Gen. Uh, we're a research group split across several institutions. This is our shiny new home, literally, the Big Data Institute in Oxford, which has only been open for a matter of weeks, and we're in the process of moving in there, so that's quite exciting. Um, we study uh, malaria, essentially, not to be competitive with the other talk in parallel, but malaria kills far more people than anything else. Um, so we're trying to do something about that. Um, you may have seen some of our work um, in the press, particularly around uh, the drug resistance that's spreading out from Southeast Asia, which is a, a really big worry. Um, more relevant to, to this form, we've been using our fresco since version 3.5, so we've done a, a few upgrades. Um, so hopefully process is getting easier and hopefully this will help it get a bit easier for you as well. So how did this all begin? Well, I blame it on Beacon last year. <laughs> there had several discussions um, just you know around the sessions, just chatting with people and the topic of upgrading kept on coming up and it sort of fermented away in my mind and uh, stuff came out. So, upgrading. So first of all I'm going to ask, ask some awkward questions. So, don't be shy. Which version are you primarily running? Who's still on 4.2? Anybody? Yeah, a couple. Uh, 5.0? Yeah, similar people. 5.1? That's a good, good sprinkling. And how about the people living on the edge, 5.2? Yeah, and some of you must be running on something really old. But, um, so, upgrade, is it necessary evil? Yeah, it's a bit like it, cleaning out the ditches, cleaning the gutters, getting the boiler serviced, it's stuff you don't really want to do, but then you never quite get round to it, and then your house floods, your boiler blows up, and chaos ensues. So, yeah, try and remember to do it from time to time. The other side of the coin is it's an exciting opportunity. Our fresco put all this work into producing these new exciting features, so it's you know exciting to upgrade. I love about this the nervous excitement. It's always really nerve-wracking to do an upgrade as well. So um, I've written a blog post with a, a longer discussion on this, uh, which I've referenced at the bottom, but I'm not going to go into it too much. But basically, don't leave it too long. So a side effect I discovered when I was doing this is this tool I've written also <laughs> provides a very basic form of QA. So when you're looking at new extensions to bring into your installation, this will give you an idea about whether it will work with the version that you're targeting. It's only very basic, but it, it is useful. It's an area I'd like to expand. Um, partly I need ideas, partly time, but it's, it's something that's useful. So, quick overview of how it works. First of all, buyer beware. My kids aren't quite as old as Jeff's, so they drew a picture for me <laughs> instead. But first of all, be very aware that this is an assistant. It's not going to do the job for you. It's really helpful, but it, it assists you. That's all it does. It, but it does make it a lot easier. Still don't skip major versions. So go from 5.0. something to 5.1. something. That will work. Don't try and go from 4.2 to 5.1. <coughs> that way, pain and dragons fly. 
Um, there's plenty of room for improvement in this. I should say now, this started off as a really quick hack. I've iterated over it a bit. It's a bit better than it was. Um, I'm not enormously proud of the quality of the code, but it works till Friday. That's all you need for something that you're, you're running like this. And hopefully with all the experienced and certified engineers we've got around here, you can help improve it and add on extra functionality. I'm making it up as I go along. So what does it do? First thing it does is harvest. It harvests the beans and other things like the web script. So it looks into your code to see what you've done, trying to work out which extension points you're using so that it, it's got an idea about what it's trying to compare. Next thing, it, does, it takes this list it's gathered of what, what it's looking at and it then tries to find it in the Alfresco source. So it does a big checkout from SVN, looks, looks to see if there's something in your code that matches something in the Alfresco code. If it does, it looks for it in the new version, compares the two. And if those two have changed, <coughs> then you're going to need to do something as to your own code as part of the upgrade process. This is magic, and it doesn't magic doesn't always work. So what I've, an extra thing I've put in is a mapping file that gives it some clues about what to do. Um, so it's just JSON. Um, three different types here. Um, two I'll talk about later. The one I'll talk about now is the avatar service. So one of my customizations loads um, JPEG photo from LDAP into uh, the avatar. And in order to do that, I've created an avatar service bean. That is a combination of two web scripts. So I, what I want to know is have either of those web scripts changed. So here you can see my bean ID of avatar service maps to these two files. So that's one example of how the uh, mapping file works. So some examples. So what I'm going to do here, these examples are all in GitHub under the project. The project doesn't compile, it doesn't do anything, it, but it's got examples of, of these pieces of code. I'm going to talk through it first and then I'll hopefully have time to do a, an actual live demo. So the first example, and this is really the one that started it all off for me. Um, so in the site service security bean, there's a change to the definition. I very nearly missed this when I was doing an upgrade. Um, so I was you know, setting up a few warning bells. And then I discovered Jeff's share site creators uh, extension. So I thought, great, this is better than mine. It's more complete. This is brilliant. I'll use his instead. But just before I put it in, I run my tool against it. And my tool showed Jeff had missed the same thing. So that made me feel great. Because <laughs> um, I knew that I'd made the, I hadn't made a really silly mistake, just almost a, a slightly silly mistake. And if, if this tool is helpful for someone like Jeff, then yeah. hopefully it's helpful for a lot of people. So that's on a beam definition. So what, what happens next? It's given you some out, told you which files to look at, it's given you some diff output. So manually examining the tool, the output of the tool, and just going through it by hand to look at it. What could it do? I, there's no reason technically it couldn't create a patch file, patch your code, you know, if it's in Git, put in a pull request so you can review it more closely. And when Alfresco and we've got the Alfresco git. If it's a bug fix, you could even tell it to create a pull request against the Alfresco code base. Partly time, but also I think there's real value in examining the change closely and understanding the change and understanding the implications for your code. Um, 
but it's going to remain manual for the time being anyway. So I hope you can read that all right. Um, this is an example of where replacing a, an alfresco beam with uh, my own beam definition. I won't go into why I want to do this. I know there are extension points for the property decorator. They don't work for my purposes, but that, that doesn't really matter. Um, one reason this is quite a good example is there are actually loads of places where the username properties decorator bean should be used and isn't. So it covers quite a lot of different use cases. Um, so anyway, moving on to what it's actually doing, you can see at the bottom it's spotted that this bean is defined in all three versions. It tells me what cut my custom class is and then it's checking the Java for the out-of-the-box classes and it's telling me because the Java's changed between the two Alfresco Java files, I need to do something. And then there'll, there'll be some diff output that, that tells me what's changed. Now, moving on to the next example, because I can, although he's not here, I can almost hear Axel saying, don't do it like that, don't use the bean ID. So here we have um, the bean factory post processor where you've got the, the magic property of um, target bean name. Essentially does the same thing as the previous example, but instead of the ID, it's the target bean name that's used to check uh, what's changed. So another example here of using the mapping file. So I've got some changes I want to make to the mail action. I don't want to change the out-of-the-box mail action, but my customised version is pretty similar. It just adds a few bits and pieces. It's not easy to um, you know, subclass it. But So what I want to do is I want to know if the out-of-the-box uh, bean ID of mail has changed and then I'd look at my custom mail and see what those changes are there. So this tells me if the bean ID of mail in Alfresco has changed, then it should tell me that I need to look at custom mail, what I've defined as custom mail. So to show it doesn't just manage cope with Java, um, quickly shows a doc list that's changed, similar thing, tells me which files I need to look at, what's changed in the diff. The second JavaScript example, this is slightly more interesting. So this is to do with um, sites when you're creating them or, or customising them. So first thing to notice is it says conflict in customization. This is because I've got two jars that are attempting to replace the same file. So that there's a value in checking everything at once. So that's the first thing, which is a useful thing to know. Another next thing to show is if you look closely at the paths, you'll see that one of these is produced using SDK 2.2 and one's using SDK3. So it'll handle both of those and um, show you that actually it's the same file that it's trying to change. And then the third, third thing is why the tool can't always help, because the way this works has changed fundamentally in 5.2. So you've got to be really aware of what's going on. You can't just rely on a tool. You've got to keep your finger on the pulse. Um, and make changes there. The tool's never going to help with that unless people are putting in special cases. So another thing it checks is XML. So some of you might know me from my work on um, the CAS single sign-on. So part of that, I really want to know if the web XML has changed because that you know can have extra endpoints in. Um, so 
it just reports on the differences with WebXML and the same for the shared config custom. You, know, you may not need to change anything, but it's just useful to know what's changed between versions, and this is a handy way of showing it. So another more complicated example. So I was talking about how the username properties decorator isn't used everywhere it should be. And this is one case. So there's um, a protected method within the abstract discussion web script, which is used by 11 different classes. So I don't want to change all 11 different classes. So what I can do is I can use an aspect, put a wrap around the protected method, and replace its functionality. So how would I pick that up? I can't pick it up but I can use my mapping file again. So you can see it doesn't actually matter what you put in the um, in the key. Um, it's just telling me what the class is, you know, if that class has changed between the different versions. So how to use it? Well, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a, a fairly simple Python 3 script. Um, you need Python 3. You don't need to install anything, any packages or anything. It's all um, very straightforward. So, now it's time to start praying to demo gods. So I'm going to start it. Um, this is an old shared laptop, so the drive's really slow. Um, on a, if you've got a nice SSD, this takes no time at all. I'm going to start that, and then I'm going to show you the script. That's a bit big. Can you still read that? Yeah. 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 So m most of the script is actually involved in trying to check out from SVN. Hopefully when we get the, the nice new Git repo, this becomes much easier. Um, I spent a bit of time trying to work out how to check out the different versions. It's, it's getting easier. Um, so that 4.2 is horrible. Um, so all that actually matters is the, is the two lines at the bottom. So all the rest of it is just setting up directory paths and doing SVN checkouts. So hopefully even on yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll make it a bit smaller again. So, uh, actually, I think I'm going to run it again because it's not. Right, so it's quite quick even on here. So here's. Here's my first thing it's found. It's the example I was showing with the um, sites web scripts. Then, so it's telling me what I need to check. So now, moving down, you can <coughs> see this is where I've got my custom mail bean. So it's telling me that I'm using the, the mapping config telling me the custom class that it's checking and then it's going on to tell me what what the difference between the alfresco java classes are and if we go down we can see what's going on and it's just java doc so hooray you don't need to do anything so now moving on to what I'd call the Axle version. Um, again, it's told me the bean definitions match, it's told me the custom class is being used, it's telling me there's different Java between the versions. This one's much more complicated. Um, I won't even pretend to even understand what's going on here. But there's lots, lots of it. So, Axel may have some work to do. 
Um, so here is my my famous beam that started it all. So you can you can see that um, it's telling me this line here with the plus what's changed. This one's even more helpful because it tells me the difference between my code and the old version. So that should be telling me the changes I made whenever it was I did this um, customization back in the midst of time that I can't quite remember. Um, so you can see from you know, normal diff output and so you can see that this is the relevant bit so instead of the ACL allow and create a site I want the ACL method group dot site dot group dot site creators so some more more stuff that I don't need to worry about um, got the user Username property decorator here. So again, this is looks like it's just a Java doc. So good, don't need to worry about that. Um, you can see in the middle of the screen here, it's picked up the aspect configuration. It's telling me it's checking the Java, and then it's telling me it's telling me it's the same Java nothing to do there either so that's great so now move, moving on down to the doc list example so here it's going to tell me if I have a look something's gone in for the smart folders quite a small thing that would be nice and easy to put back that's the sort of thing you could easily miss um, so it's very I find it very handy so we've got some some web XML stuff. So you can see there's an authentication filter gone in. Um, I think that's gone in rather than come out. Um, so that's really useful to know um, because that, not particularly in the context of my CAS SSO work, <coughs> so it's something I need to be very aware of. Um, so then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. There's some more filters gone in. That could be interesting. <coughs> Probably need to you know, look into that and work out why. What's going on. And there's a bunch of other stuff. Um, so then again, it's doing the same, same idea for the share config custom. So again, you can see there's some extra information gone in around smart folders. So that, that's useful to be aware of. Right, so fastest that I've done it. <laughs> so um, time for some questions. Ready? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, does this work with Enterprise Edition or just can you be at this point? I don't have access to enterprise, um, so <coughs> just community is the answer. But there's no, you know, if you've got access to the source, then it should be pretty straightforward to, to make it work. Any other questions? Uh, could you just show the command that you run again and how what parameters it takes when you run it and how yeah. how flexible is it? Okay, so this is the, the overall script. So there's a, a couple of problems with it already. Um, so the actual command here is is the bottom line, is, is what's actually running. So <coughs> it's name of the Python script. Then the next parameter is the um, name of the directory you want to check. I, I usually just use a symbolic link and change it according to what I want to check. Um, the 
destination is um, is where the code's been checked out to, and then it's got old version and new version. It only supports old version and new version, so it won't work with um, you know, a different version of share and a different version of repo, um, which is the way things are moving, but as it happens, um, for 5.1, I used 5.1.g for both repo and share, even though it's not a packaged uh, way of doing things. Um, I needed a fix in 5.1.g share, and it seemed to work with 5.1.g repo, um, so I was happy to, to do that. So that's one area it could Any other questions? No? Okay, can, I, can I ask a question? Who thinks yeah. this looks useful? <laughs> okay, good. good. So I, I hope you're all going to use it and feedback and put some pull requests and yeah, hopefully over time this can get, get to be a really helpful tool because I, I know upgrading is a really painful process when you've got your own customisation so hopefully this can take some of the pain out. Thank you.